So good afternoon, everyone from the Philippines. Mabuhay. So welcome to the Philippine session, which we will be discussing the future of plastics, closing the plastic loop. The team has prepared a pre-recorded discussion, so please stay and please watch this. Mabuhay, good afternoon, and welcome to World Vision Philippines Innovations in Practice Country Session. We hope that you are doing well and good from wherever you are joining us in Asia or anywhere around the world. We also hope that you have been enjoying the Limitless Asia Summit for Corporate Good so far and were able to attend the opening plenary and fireside chats this morning. But if not, don't worry because we are only in day one and there are many more exciting and insightful conversations to look forward to today and tomorrow. But this afternoon, we turn our attention to a grave and threatening issue facing our country. The Philippines is in the midst of a waste crisis. It is producing 2.7 million metric tons of plastic waste per year, of which around 30% are mismanaged and enter into the ocean, making it the third largest contributor globally. The COVID-19 pandemic has only worsened this as the consumption of plastic and medical waste drastically increased during this time. In this session, we will look into what innovations companies are driving into this space to address the problem and move towards a more sustainable and inclusive circular plastic economy. My name is Caroline Veronilia. I am the Advocacy and Campaign Specialist of World Vision Philippines and welcome to the future of plastics, closing the plastic loop. The Philippines among the biggest sources of mismanaged plastic waste in the entire planet. A peer-reviewed study published in the Science Advances Journal shows 466 rivers across the country contribute 30% of the plastic waste that end up in the world's oceans. Majority of these polluted rivers are in Asia, with seven of those in the top 10 located in the Philippines. The Pasig River ranking number one by a wide margin. The Philippines' Climate Change Commission describes the findings as an extreme concern. It urges the public to use alternatives and shift away from single-use plastics. The plastic market industry in the Philippines is booming, contributing to 2.3 billion US dollars to the national economy in 2018. Many Filipinos rely on single-use or short-use package products for their everyday needs and consumptions. Just take a quick trip to your nearest big chain grocery store in the city or the multitude of sari-sari stores in smaller towns and barangays, and you will see countless of these products from food, beverages, and snacks to health essentials such as shampoo, soap, and toothpaste. Plastics have provided low-cost consumer goods, particularly to those belonging in the lower income and economic classes in the form of sachets and packets, which poor families and meager wage earners prefer to buy because it is only what they can afford. But all these come at a devastating price. Rapid urbanization coupled with mismanaged plastic waste and litter from land-based sources is generating significant economic and environmental costs. It is reducing the productivity of vital natural systems such as the ocean and coastal areas, endangering marine life, endangering the livelihood of fishermen, impacting the shipping and tourism industries, and clogging urban infrastructure. To top it off, this mismanagement of plastic waste is closely correlated to the growth of overall municipal solid waste. In March 2021, the World Bank released a market study on plastic waste in the Philippines. It is said that the country generated an estimated 14.6 million tons of municipal solid waste in 2016. By 2019, it grew to 15.8 million tons. And by 2030, they forecast that it will reach 20 million tons, which is a 37% growth compared to 2016. 
It is glaringly apparent then that the Philippines, like many other rapidly developing countries, struggle with unsustainable plastic production and consumption that is made even worse because of a solid waste management infrastructure that is insufficient and unable to support this tremendous output. The Philippine government has begun work on strategies and roadmaps to address and meet this challenge. The Ecological Solid Waste Management Act, RA9003, is an integrated solid waste management plan based on the three R's of reduce, reuse, and recycle that will support the National Economic and Development Authority's Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022, which targets a national waste diversion rate of 80% by 2022. It will take more than just government policies and plans, however, to succeed. A concerted, unified, and sustained national movement, investment, and participation from the private sectors and industries and the general population and consumer is vital. In fact, the private sector and particularly companies and major brands in the fast-moving consumer goods industry are prime candidate to lead the charge and develop solutions to these issues through innovations in business models, product design, recycling technologies, and consumer interactions. And where they are leading us into is an exciting destination. From a linear economy of producing, using, and disposing plastic, we are moving towards a circular plastic economy. Plastics are versatile materials, but the way we use them is incredibly wasteful. 95% of the material value is lost after one single use. Our linear packaging system is broken. The take-make-waste system we operate in results in millions of tons of packaging ending up in landfills, incinerators, or worse, the environment. If we continue like this, by 2040, the volume of plastic on the market will have doubled and the flow of plastic into the ocean will have almost tripled, with ocean plastic stocks quadrupling, reaching over 600 million tonnes. More cleanups and better recycling alone won't solve plastic waste and pollution. We must shift our focus to innovations and business models that design out waste, keep materials in use and protect and restore our environment. We need a circular economy for plastic in which it never becomes waste or pollution. The circular economy is an economic system in which materials are designed to be used, not used up. According to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which is the world's leading circular economy network, a circular economy is based on three principles driven by design. First, eliminate waste and pollution by designing products that can be circulated by being maintained, shared, reused, repaired, refurbished, remanufactured, and as a last resort, recycled. Second, circulate products and materials at their highest value, keeping materials in use either as a product or when that can no longer be used as components or raw materials. And third, regenerate nature by building capital instead of continuously degrading nature. We must transform every element of our take, make, waste system, how we manage resources, how we make and use products, and what we do with the materials afterwards. Only then can we create a thriving circular economy that can benefit everyone within the limits of our planet. By 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the world's oceans. But what if people stop throwing their plastic bottles away? Coca-Cola imagines a world where waste is not wasted and instead makes its way to a place where trash can transform. From something forgotten after use to something of value and with limitless use. From something that is thrown away to something that creates communities that thrive From a reimagined resource to something that has a life beyond its initial use. Transforming ways of living that generates jobs, inspires dignity, and creates partnerships by creating something that can be used over 
and over, and over, and over again. Refreshing the planet and paving the way for a better future. This is the vision of Coca-Cola. To collect and recycle every bottle or can we sell by 2030. But we can't do it alone. Together as one country, one community, we can turn the vision of a world without waste into reality. Let's go beyond good and refresh the way we see our waste for a better tomorrow. Be part of our journey. World Without Waste, this is the name of the Coca-Cola company's initiative and commitment to collect and recycle a bottle or can for everyone it sells by 2030. Make 100% of its packaging recyclable by 2025 and to use at least 50% recycled material in its packaging by 2030. With the goal of closing the loop on plastic packaging, World Without Waste plays an important role in the creation of a circular economy that benefits not only us, but also the generations to come. In 2021, we invited Coca-Cola Foundation Philippines President Cecil Alcantara to speak in our CSR Summit. Here is an excerpt of her presentation. Our second W pillar is the all-important pillar of waste. Our global commitment as a company is a world without waste, where our vision is to collect, recover, and recycle 100% of the bottles we use by 2030. The case for change is evident, as four of the top five countries polluting the oceans come from the ASEAN, with the Philippines as one of the four. The company's approach towards addressing this global problem is through three large initiatives, design, partner, and collect. The business operations of Coca-Cola is heavily focused on redesigning packaging and exploring packaging-free alternatives. For the business side of the company, Coca-Cola has partnered with Indorama Ventures for the largest recycling plant in the Philippines. It is a state-of-art bottle-to-bottle recycling facility that will be operational in Imos, Cavite in December of this year. It will ultimately help create a circular economy that not only fosters collection and recycling, but also helps to lift and enrich lives throughout the value chain. The Foundation's work has included educa educating communities on proper solid waste management long before the company made the 2018 global commitment. The commitment has only motivated us to do more. In the last three years, we have supported different solid waste management community programs in the country, working closely with local NGOs and civic organizations to educate, engage, and empower more communities with effective solid waste management initiatives. Through our 19 NGO partners, we have reached 32 communities in 17 provinces, all with diverse and effective solid waste management systems. These organizations work closely with communities of waste pickers, nanais, barangays, to implement proper segregation recycling, and upcycling activities. Our education campaign for proper waste management also reaches public schools to our partners, Teach for the Philippines and World Vision. World Vision also believes and advocates for a world without waste. One of our top priorities is the health and well-being of children, especially of the most vulnerable, living in extreme poverty conditions. We believe in creating a safe and healthy environment for them, free of dangerous pollution and waste that can lead to diseases. And we believe in cultivating a progressive community where children and every other member become drivers of behavioral change. That is why in 2019, we partnered with Coca-Cola Foundation Philippines and launched the Trash to Treasure project, which established a school-based solid waste management system in Mandawi City and Cebu City. 
This included constructing material recovery facilities, empowering solid waste management committees, and incentivizing students to properly collect and segregate their waste. The Trash to Treasure is a one-year project with Coca-Cola Foundation that aims to establish solid waste collection and recycling systems in at least 15 schools in Metro Cebu. The goals of the project are one, to educate at least 22,500 students on proper solid waste management or disposal. Second is to collect 45,000 kilos of plastics and this was um, reduced to 5,000 kilos as we face challenges because of the pandemic. Trust to Treasure project is a big help no? in minimizing the accumulation of plastic waste uh, in our environment, in our surroundings, not only in our school but also in the community where our teachers and learners live. The academic Department of Education um, make this as responsibility not only to educate people, to educate students, no, mama na atong 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 main 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 mission ng mga educate ang mga bata. And doing so, when we're going to educate students, we are also um, making these uh, pro societal problems minimize. Uh, isip ako yung nangung sa clean and green. Ang amo lang ani gid nga amo ang monitor ang matagusa niya. Ang kanisang akong grupo sa Clean and Green, kuan man sad mga aktibo ba o oh, magpasalamat ni sa World Vision of sa Coca-Cola sa ilahang project nga Trust to Treasure nga diin usa ang amo ang barangay umapad nga ilahang natabangan sa ilahang project. Daghan kay salamat World Vision of Coca-Cola. I'd like to ask all private groups or foundations or individuals to please support this kind of project and help the schools. Help the school, adapt the schools. We have an adapt a school program. Help the schools, adapt the schools, and then I know we can make it if everybody we should help. Kailahan kay ka ng mga water bottles nga akong gamiton in noon, ka ng mga juices. Kaya ako nang i-collecta kay para makuan dito, para magamit sa siya. Niya, masan, ako sana siyang gishare sa eskilahan. At doon sa, sa balay, ang mga sana kuan niya. Kaya itong pagsugod na sa pandemic, kay at doon ako nag-start of recycling. So I believe uh, this could be sustained because uh, as what I've said, uh, we are imposing to implement our solid waste management plan. And uh, I also believe that uh, the people will continue what they have started to be done because they earn already uh, little money out of this one. And also we experience that there will be no more flooding that happens in our area. So for those things, for those things, no, I don't, I don't think so that uh, people would stop that good practices that we have already done. So this should be continued. As a student leader, panang, usa sa platforms na mo before ko ni Dagag President is about the environment. Labot gitya sa mo platform nga mag-save og mga battles to influence students, to give them awareness. I would like to express our gratitude to World Vision and Coca-Cola for initiating this project. By this, we able to help the environment. Grabe ka ayo na ang World Vision o ang uh, Coca-Cola Foundation mo conduct sa ilang project. Di yung kapasagdan. They keep on communicating us. They keep on conducting meeting. In fact, they had conducted training sa atong mga 
mga coordinators sa school nga naghandle sa atong waste bitaw sa naamatay school uh, waste management nga koan committee so the project has educated 28,500 students on proper solid waste management we have collected um, 5,500 kilos of plastics as of February 15. Um, there are now 11 schools with functional MRF. Then we have provided um, two bottle beans each to nine schools and we have provided 33 beans to the four partner barangays. Few things are more ambitious than aiming to rid the world of waste, and Procter & Gamble is rising to the challenge. With impactful environmental sustainability goals called Ambition 2030. Among those goals, to make 100% of their packaging recyclable or reusable by 2030, and enabling circular solutions. Tough tasks for sure, but the company says the key is collaboration. For its part, PNG knows it has a big role to play in making responsible consumption possible every day for consumers. At PNG, we are heavily investing in R&D to find the best alternative packaging solutions and designs that will function excellently without compromise. Our Herbal Essences Bio Renew bottles are now made with 25% post-consumer resin or upcycled plastic waste. PNG's efforts don't end there. The company is also educating its employees and consumers and partnering to recover and divert waste. At PNG, environmental sustainability is a real business strategy and priority. We are innovating to reduce, recycle, reuse, and make recovery easier for our consumers. Let's protect our common home together. Similar to Coca-Cola, we also partnered with global brand Procter & Gamble and launched the Pag-asa sa Basura or Hope in Trash project in 2019. Targeting 26 partner schools in the communities of Quezon City and Malabon City, this project aimed to educate and train students and parents on proper waste segregation, management, and recycling. More than 10,000 students were incentivized and 26 schools were provided with rehabilitated materials, recovery facilities, and collection bins. By the end of the project, more than 3 million sachets and more than 900,000 bottles were collected overall. These all align with PNG's sustainability goals called Ambition 2030. These broad-reaching goals have one purpose in mind, to enable and inspire positive impact on our environment and society while creating value for the company and the consumer. This means making product packaging 100% recyclable and reusable by the end of the decade, as well as eliminating the use of virgin plastic by 50% among other goals.
truly grateful for these partnerships and we commend and congratulate the Coca-Cola Company and Procter & Gamble for their commitment to sustainable change and closing the plastic loop. Earlier, we talked about the three principles of a circular economy. The second principle of the circular economy is to circulate products and materials either as a product or as components or raw materials. This way, nothing becomes waste and the intrinsic value of the products and materials are retained. These terms are already familiar to us, but there is another concept that has grown increasingly popular in the sustainability world, which is upcycling. In brief, upcycling is the process of reusing old materials and creating something new and of higher value. Have you noticed that I am sitting on a different chair? This is called an intellect armchair, which is an upcycled chair that is made from 750 pieces of sachet and 1,500 grams of beverage carton. This is made by Sentinel Upcycling Technologies, which is an enterprise that turns single-use packaging waste into durable products such as crates, pallets, trolleys, trays, and furniture. To talk more about Sentinel and their role in the plastic circular economy, I am honored to welcome and introduce Mr. Jonathan Ko. Jonathan is the project head of Sentinel of Cycling Technologies since it started eight years ago. He has 17 years of experience in the plastics industry. His current and previous roles include sales and marketing, product development, organizational development, and operations management. He graduated with a degree in plastics engineering from the British Columbia Institute of Technology in Vancouver, Canada, and he also studied management information systems in the Ateneo de Manila University. For he and his team's accomplishments, he was awarded Entrepreneur Sustainability Leadership for 2021 by Sustainable PH, a nonprofit community based in the Philippines that aims to raise sustainability leaders. Good afternoon and welcome to Limitless, Jonathan. Hello everyone. My name is Jonathan Ko. I am the project head of Sentinel Upcycling Technologies. I want to thank Carol and the World Vision Group. I am happy and honored to be here. A special shout out to our partners in World Vision Philippines. The title of my talk today is Upcycling and Recycling as part of the Basket of Solutions to closing the plastic loop. I was given an eight minute time limit, so there's really not much I can do except to give you a flavor of who we are and what we do and give you some general themes about what I think we need to do and how we can work together to achieve the goal of plastic neutrality. We believe that upcycling, while shouldn't be the only solution, it is, however, a key part to achieving a sustainable and inclusive circular plastics economy. We say that this is sustainable because with our focus on sourcing from community-based organizations that do grassroots post-consumer collection, we believe that this is a way to make it sustainable. You see, the largest cost of post-consumer sourcing is the cleaning and sorting by having the cleaning and sorting done as close to the source as possible, we have already significantly unburdened the industrial waste management infrastructure. Next is the aggregation to lower the logistics cost. Now, because of Republic Act 9003 in the Philippines, mandating, among other things, that each barangay, it is what a small town is called here in the Philippines, must have a material recovery facility then it can theoretically be taken, those sorted clean recyclables can be theoretically taken to the MRF and aggregated. And it makes it more feasible for the logistics cost to go down because bigger trucks can then come and pick up the recyclables. We aim to make it sustainable by making post-consumer source a viable alternative to industrially sourced recyclables. This is something that we can do. We can lower its cost by making it inclusive. Of course, there are challenges because 
we are trying to switch communities and individuals from a single stream waste management mindset where all waste goes to a single bin to a system where waste is cleaned and sorted at source into, at least in our office, 12 types. You may ask, why 12? Uh, the answer is so simple and it's beautiful in its elegance. It's 12 because that's what our local buyers want, okay? Uh, including us. Now, what can we use in our production, right? I, I want to pause here because we are running out of uh, time. At this point, if, if you're more interested, I will have my contact details at the end of this video. Please reach out to me and to our group and we'll, we would be happy to expound on the points that uh, we made in the previous section. But in this section, this next section, I would like to show you this video introducing our project. Again, we are Sentinel Upcycling Technologies from the Philippines. So please watch this and I'll see you on the other side of the video. So what have we been able to accomplish? Since we started, we have rescued about 120 tons of post-consumer recyclable plastics. We've also made them into about 107,000 pieces of products, ranging from school furniture, monoblock furniture, park benches, crates of various shapes and sizes, pallets, mobile bins, and even rosary beads. But we have barely scratched the surface of the problem. We have a long way to go to achieve plastic neutrality. This would entail multiple approaches, combining reduction strategies, reuse strategies, recycle strategies, repurpose strategies, in addition to the upcycling strategies. What we are trying to build in Sentinel Upcycling Technologies is an ecosystem that is a win 
win-win. What that means is we are trying to find that sweet spot where what is good for the environment is good for business and good for society. One thing for sure, supporting companies like ours who makes products from post-consumer sourced, and I cannot stress this enough, third-party validated. Third-party validated because greenwashing is a constant threat to our industry. Sourcing from consumer is necessary so we can keep buying these materials from the communities. Finally, let me close by giving some action plan recommendations. The first thing is to just start. Start what? Start the recycle ready sorting method in your office. Okay? We provide the training for that. You can get in touch with us. We provide the equipment. For example, this is a picture of our vertical sorting bin. We made this to address the space issues in offices. You know, you cannot have 12 trash bins spread out horizontally in your office, right? So you we so we made it vertical. One of my favorite quotes is from a show in the 90s called The West Wing, where President Bartlett, the protagonist, was talking to one of his aides during uh, at the time when he was being appointed to an executive position in the White House. He said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful and committed citizens can change the world. And then he asked his aide, do you know why? And the aide answered, because it's the only thing that ever has. Second thing, please uh, emphasizing this uh, because we have a lot of corporate partners here. I ask of you, please practice environmentally preferential purchasing policies. It is not enough to take care of the supply side of the uh, economic equation. We need your help in creating the demand for the products that companies like ours are able to make from the post-consumer recyclables. Please make us a substitute to the products you are already buying for your operations. Please take a chance. That's all we're asking. If you have a requirement for a thousand pallets, for example, please give us a trial order for maybe 100 to 200 pieces. Please remember that this is a very new thing where our goal is sourcing from post-consumer sources costs the same as sourcing recyclable materials from industrial sources. Currently, it is more expensive to source from post-consumer than industrial. Please give us enough runway by supporting us to continuously build the momentum and build the scale to make the cost differential from post-consumer to industrial closer and closer. In support of that, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to promote our social enterprise partners. We are not a junk shop. We are not a recycler. In our industry, we are a manufacturer, right? We are making the end product. And in order to do this successfully and sustainably, we have to operate on the ground. And that's why whenever I get the chance, I promote our social enterprise partners. Consider reaching out and working with them. These are the groups that operate in the grassroots. Ideal Material Recovery Philippines, Green Ants, Green Space, Green Trident, formerly known as Green Haven, Eco Collect in Palawan, Cora. Envirotech in Davao, Trash Cash, Go Round Collective, Coral Movement, Waste for Good, Alod and Arrow Club of Zambales, Humble Sustainability, Regenerative Revolution, My Basurero by Best, Poly Alpro, Trash Panda, Plastic Flamingo, and, and, and many others. I, I would also like to take the time to thank and honor the companies that took a chance at us. Thank you for supporting us. We have big multinational companies like Robinson's Malls, Ayala Land, Dow Chemicals, Procter & Gamble, Nestle, Unilever, Coca-Cola, to small and medium-sized companies like Budget Bodega, Applied Machining, Integrated Waste Management, and many, many small and medium enterprises. Thank you so much for taking a chance and supporting us. I would like to close by saying that it works if we work together.
Again, I would like to thank World Vision for having me today. That ends my presentation. You can reach us through the following means. Scan this QR code to visit our Facebook page. Scan this QR code to add me to your contact details. Scan this QR code to see our product brochure. And scan this QR code to visit our online store. That's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation, Jonathan. Your innovation, technology, and ingenuity at Sentinel Upcycling Technologies not only supports a plastic circular economy that breathes new life into products and our planet, but directly contributes to society's needs as well. In fact, Sentinel was also part of the Trash to Treasure and Pag-asa sa Basura projects. Using the plastic waste that was collected, they were able to provide 21 public schools in Metro Cebu with upcycled chairs with recyclable sheet barrier and more than 3,000 chairs to schools in Metro Manila for the past three years. Truly, upcycling is for everyone. A typical day starts with a good hearty breakfast. Instead of plastic containers, we've made it a habit to store our snacks and food ingredients in reusable glass jars. This year, we also started making our own bread so we can eat healthier stuff and avoid the plastic wrapping that comes with store-bought pastries. We love making omelets for breakfast, but nothing is wasted because we've found a use for eggshells as a natural fertilizer for our mini rooftop vegetable and herb garden. And of course, grocery shopping is never complete without an echo bag. At work, I have special containers for some of my things. Instead of throwing these plastic canisters, I reuse them. For jotting down notes, I use my rocket book. It is a reusable notebook that you can turn into digital files for keepsake. Save streets and definitely reduces trash. When I do field work or workout, I bring water using my own tumbler to do away with purchasing bottled water. For snacks and pack lunch, my wife prepares them in reusable containers. In my bag, I always bring my own utensils and metal straw to avoid asking for plastic cutleries whenever eating out. My wife and I love books, but not all of what we read are physical materials. We buy ebooks and use Kindle to read them, or sometimes listen to an audiobook. This is Audible. Blackstone Audio presents short stories. By C.S. Lewis. We want to reflect the same eco-friendly practices in our small business. So last year, we introduced biodegradable wrappers for our packaging. We use seaweed wraps and craft paper tapes instead of plastic bubble wraps and tapes to wrap these fragile items. At home, we segregate our household trash and fill in bottles with pieces of plastic and foil wastes to make eco bricks. Finally, Fico, our adopted cat, uses a cat litter made of dried tofu. It can be flashed in the toilet and dissolves easily in water so it doesn't add to the landfill like ordinary cat litters. These are some of the few things we do to reduce trash and reuse or recycle non-biodegradables. However small, if many people will do their part to help save our common home, Mother Nature and the next generation will thank us for it.
much, Dexter, for this endearing video and for sharing your eco-friendly practices at home, at work, for your small business, and even for your cat. Dexter is my colleague at World Vision, and this is a reminder that while this afternoon we have heard of how innovations and sustainable practices from industry Three leaders such as the Coca-Cola Company and Procter and Gamble contribute to closing the plastic loop, and how enterprises like Sentinel Upcycling Technologies bring the waste management process full circle. We all have to do our part to make this work. Closing the plastic loop begins at home, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much again for joining our session on behalf of World Vision Philippines. Mabuhay, and we hope to see you in other sessions. Thank you also to all our guests who are here in the session today. Up next is session two. Is technology an enabler or a barrier for equitable education? See you at the session link. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>